Sutra on Perfect Wisdom. The Large Sutra on Perfect Wisdom. With the Divisions of the Abhishamalamkara. Translated by Edward Conze. University of California Press Berkeley, Los Angeles, London. Translation of the Sutra. Chapter 48. Settlement in the Training of a Bodhisattva. Thereupon the gods of the realm of sense desire and of the realm of form took heavenly sandalwood powder. Took heavenly blue lotuses, pink lotuses, night lotuses, and white lotuses, and scattered them over the Lord. They approached to where the Lord was, respectfully saluted his feet with their heads, stood on one side, and said to the Lord. Deep, O Lord, is the perfection of wisdom, hard to see, hard to understand, incomprehensible, engage in incomprehensibilities, subtle, delicate, to be felt only by the learned and discerning. In antagonism to the entire world is the enlightenment of the Tathagatas, by which the Tathagatas are able to expand this so deep perfection of wisdom. Form, is just the knowledge of all modes, the knowledge of all modes is just form, the suchness of form, too. The Buddha, and the suchness of the knowledge of all modes, are just one single suchness, they are not two or divided. Antagonism to the entire world. The Lord. So it is, O gods. When he considers this sequence of reasoning, the thought of the Tathagata is inclined to carefree non-action and not to the demonstration of Dharma. And why? Because surely this Dharma, the enlightenment of the Tathagata is deep. Hard to see, hard to understand, incomprehensible, engage in incomprehensibilities, subtle, delicate, to be felt only by the learned and discerning, and antagonistic to the entire world. It has not been fully known by anyone, not at any time, nor anywhere. This is the depth of dharmas wherein the habitual idea of duality does not exist. This dharma is deep through the idea of space. Of suchness, of the dharma element, of the reality limit, of the unthinkable element, of the endless and boundless, of that which neither comes nor goes. Of the full knowledge of non-production and non-stopping, of non-defilement and non-purification, of the full knowledge of the unaffected, of the self, too. One who sees, of form and the other skandhas, of the perfections, the various kinds of emptiness, too. The knowledge of all modes. The gods. Surely, as in antagonism to the entire world has this dharma been expounded. And why? Because this Dharma, O Lord, is not demonstrated for the sake of taking up form, nor for the sake of not taking it up. And so with feeling, too. The eighteen special Buddha Dharmas. The fruit of a stream winner, too. The knowledge of all modes. But it is in taking up that the world courses. Mine is form, I am form, too. Mine is the knowledge of all modes, I have the knowledge of all modes the Lord. So it is, God's, so it is. This Dharma is not demonstrated for the sake of taking up form, too. The knowledge of all modes, nor for the sake of not taking them up. But those, gods, who cause for the taking up of form, or for not taking it up, they are not capable of developing the perfection of giving, too. The perfection of wisdom, too. The knowledge of all modes. Nowhere obstructed. Subhuti. In agreement with all dharmas is this dharma. In agreement with which all dharmas. It is in agreement with the perfection of wisdom, too. The perfection of giving. The emptiness of the subject, too. The knowledge of all modes. And. This dharma. S not anywhere obstructed. By what is it not. Obstructed. By form, too. By the knowledge of all modes. Marked with non-obstruction is this Dharma. On account of its sameness with space. Suchness. The establishment of the Dharma element. The reality limit. The unthinkable element. Emptiness, the signless, the wishes, non-production, non-stopping, non-defilement and non-purification, non-produced is this Dharma, on account of the non-apprehension of the production of form, too. Of the knowledge of all modes. Groundless. Trackless apado is this Dharma, on account of the non-apprehension of form, too. 
the knowledge of all modes, without a resort, the gods of the realm of sense desire and of the realm of form. Born after the image of the Lord, O Lord, is the elder Subhuti. And why? Because whatever the elder Subhuti demonstrates, all that he just demonstrates starting from emptiness, from the signless, from the wishless. Subhuti. As you say, O gods, born after the image of the Tathagata is Subhuti the elder. It is because he is born after the image of the Tathagata. As the Tathagata's suchness has neither come nor gone, so also that of Subhuti the Elder. For from the very beginning has Subhuti the Elder come to be born after the image of the Tathagata. As the Tathagata's suchness, so is that of all Dharmas. And the suchness of all Dharmas is the same as that of the Tathagata. But the Tathagata's suchness is a no suchness. It is thus also that Subhuti the Elder has been born after the image of the Tathagata. As the Tathagata suchness, so has Subhuti the Elder been established and he has been born after the image of the Tathagata. As the Tathagata's suchness is immutable and indiscriminate, so also that of Subhuti the Elder. As the Tathagata's suchness is nowhere obstructed, so also that of all Dharmas. The suchness of the Tathagata, and the suchness of all Dharmas, they are both one single suchness, not two or divided. Unmade is that suchness, and there is nothing of which it is not the suchness. That is why it is not two or divided. It is in this sense that the elder Subhuti is born after the image of the Tathagata. Everywhere this suchness is immutable, indiscriminate, and undifferentiated, and so is also the suchness of Subhuti. Just as the Tathagata's suchness is not broken apart, unbroken, unbreakable, and unapprehensible, so is that of Subhuti. It is thus that Subhuti the Elder is born after the image of the Tathagata. As the suchness of the Tathagata cannot fail to be the suchness of each and every Dharma, just such is that suchness. Just so is Subhuti the Elder born after the image of the Tathagata because he is not other than him. But he is not born after the image of anything. It is thus that Subhuti the Elder is born after the image of the Tathagata. As the suchness of the Tathagata is not past, future, or present, so also the suchness of all Dharmas. It is thus that Subhuti the Aloda is called born after the image of the Tathagata, born after the image of suchness. Through the suchness of the sameness of the past is the suchness of the sameness of the Tathagata. Through the sameness of the suchness of the future and present. In consequence the suchness of the past, future, and present, and the suchness of the Tathagata, are not two or divided. Through the suchness of the Tathagata is the suchness of form, in consequence the suchness of form, and the suchness of the Tathagata, are not two or divided. And so for the suchness of the self, too. One who sees, of the six perfections, the various kinds of emptiness, too of the knowledge of all modes. It is because he has fully known this suchness in suchness that a bodhisattva, a great being comes to be called a Tathagata. Unborn. When this disquisition on suchness had been taught, this great trichaliacosm shook in six ways. Stirred. Quaked. Was agitated. Resounded and rumbled thereupon the gods of the realm of sense desire and of form scattered and showered heavenly sandalwood powder over the Lord and over Subhuti the Elder, and pronounced these words. It is wonderful, O Lord, how much this Subhuti the Elder is born after the image of the Tathagata through the suchness of the Tathagata. Subhuti. But Subhuti the Elder, O gods, is not born after the image of form, or anything other than form, or born after the image of the suchness of form, or anything other than the suchness of form. 2. He is not born after the knowledge of all modes, nor anything other than the knowledge of all modes. Not born after the suchness of the knowledge of all modes, nor anything other than the suchness of the knowledge of all modes. Not born after the conditioned or anything other than the conditioned. 
not born after the suchness of the conditioned, or anything other than the suchness of the conditioned. And so with the unconditioned. And why? Because all these dharmas do not exist and are not apprehended. Neither he that has been born after, nor that through which he has been born after, nor he who would be born after, nor that through which he would be born after, nor he who would make him be born after, nor that through which he would be made to be born after. The non-apprehension even of suchness. Sariputra. Deep, O Lord, is the suchness, non-falseness, unaltered suchness, the dharmahood, dharma element, the established nature of dharma, the fixed nature of dharma, the reality limit, in which no form, is apprehended, nor form suchness, form is just not apprehended, how could the suchness of form be apprehended? 2. The knowledge of all modes. The Lord. So it is, Sariputra, so it is. Deep is this suchness in which no form is apprehended, nor the suchness of form. Form is just not apprehended, how could its suchness be apprehended? 2. The knowledge of all modes. Again, Sariputra, when this chapter on suchness, non-falseness, unaltered suchness, was being taught, the thought of two hundred monks were freed from the outflows without any further clinging. To five hundred nuns there arose the dispassionate, unstained Dharma I in.